So now in this section, we'll continue again about the spanning tree protocol, which we have discussed in the previous in the previous video. We have seen the first two process selecting the root bridge. The root bridge will be selected based on the best bridge ID and then selecting the root port. Root port is again the shortest part of the root bridge and it is selected based on the three conditions. The first it will see the cost. If there's a tie in the cost, then it will see the forwarding bridge ID. If there is a tie in the forwarding bridge ID, then the least port number of the upstream upstream device. Now the last condition and based on that conditions, if you if you just try to figure out based on those conditions, in my scenario, this is a root port and this is a root port. So in this diagram, there is a the, the root port is selected based on the cost. And in the next second diagram, this is the first diagram actually. And in the second diagram, this one, the 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 root port will be selected based on based on the bridge ID, forwarding bridge ID. And in the third device, there is a tie in the bridge ID. So the root, what is that? Root port is selected based on the upstream port number. Okay. So if I go with this topology here, now the next thing they have to decide what port should be in the forwarding, what port should be in the blocking. Now, now again, the shortest path will be always the root ports, uh, the root ports or the shortest path will always be in the forwarding. Now, whichever the switch becomes a root bridge, now the root bridge ports, all the ports will be in the forwarding state. So forwarding means they always, you don't have any blocking ports on the root bridge. So when, when any switch is selected as a root bridge, it says I am the root bridge and, uh, and all my ports will be always forwarding. And also the, the root ports which was selected, they also will be in the forwarding because they are the shortest part of the root bridge. So which means they will be always forwarding the traffic. Now out of, and now out of deciding the other ports, whatever the leftover ports, they will decide them as either forwarding or blocking. So let me just write down first, this is forwarding, this is forwarding, and then this is also forwarding port or designated ports, we can call it as forwarding. Now whatever the leftover ports, either uh, this or this, any one of this port will go into blocking state. So which means all the traffic flow will go through the root bridge and any one of this port will be in the blocking state because there are only two routes, one is forwarding, other one should be blocking. Now again, the decision will be taken based on the same conditions what we discussed in, in terms of in terms of the root port. So it's going to see first, it's going to see the cost. Now in my scenario, the cost is tie on both the sides. The cost is 19 and 19. And the next condition it is going to see the forwarding bridge ID. So out of these two devices, uh, the forwarding bridge ID. Now in case of designated ports, it's not going to see the forwarding bridge ID. It's going to see the local ports. Okay, so but we need to ensure that it's not it's not uh, interfering with the root ports. Root ports always will be in the forwarding. Now it's going to see the local bridge ID, where if you try to see the priority value and the MAC address of these two devices, 0002 is going to win, which means this port goes into blocking state. Now, which means this particular port will go into blocking state based on the local bridge ID information. So in case of designated ports, it's going to see the local bridge ID instead of forwarding. And then also it will see the forward local port number rather than seeing the forwarding port numbers. So, but the conditions are same. In case of root ports, it will see the up, up, upstream port numbers. Whereas in case of designated and blocking ports, it's going to see the local port number information. So the port goes into blocking state uh, because the bridge ID of the switch two is much better than switch three and it is going to put this port into blocking state. So all the traffic going from switch two to switch three will go via switch one. As I said, this root bridge will be the central switch or the central focal point for all your traffic. And all the traffic destined to any network will be going via root bridge because this is a central switch from where all your traffic flows. And this port will be in the blocking state as long as your main link is working. Okay, so these are default STP process and this process happens automatically whenever you connect multiple switches. We are not going to add any single command for this to work. And but we need to understand how exactly the STP process happens. Three different steps. Now, let us add some more information before we actually verify uh, verify the spanning tree 
behavior on the command line so the three steps which we discussed just now selecting the root bridge selecting the root ports and selecting the designated and non-designated ports designated ports are the ports which are in the forwarding and non-designated ports the ports which are in the blocking state now there are some other information like as i discussed there is something called hello messages which is sent by the switches between them and these hello messages are sent for every two seconds so uh, at the time of initial process initial on the first step if you remember selecting the root bridge now every switch will by default advertise itself as a root bridge it says i'm the root bridge now switch 2 also will say i'm the root bridge now the switch 2 will compare its own bridge id and the neighbor bridge id and it says that i'm not the root who is the root switch 1 is the root now they they come to a conclusion based on the bpdu messages so at the time of initial process where everyone will think i'm the root they all send bpd messages but once they elect a common root now the root bridge will start sending the bpd messages to all the switches now the non root bridges will not send the bpd messages initially in case of normal spanning tree and it is sent for every 2 seconds and in case if the link goes down due to some reason i am not receiving the hello messages on this interface the switch is going to wait for a maximum of 20 seconds that's what we call as maximum edge time before it starts using the alternate port into forwarding okay so the maximum wait uh, it is going to wait or we can say dead time is 20 seconds and then this entire stp process whatever we are going to discuss it happens in in the in the time frame of 30 seconds now we call them as listening and learning stages so whenever you power on the switch for the first time by default every port goes through listening state where it is going to listen to the bpd messages and decide the root bridge and then decide some root ports and forwarding ports designated ports so the entire process whatever i discussed it happens in the frame of 30 seconds before it actually puts the ports into either forwarding or in the blocking state depending upon the calculation process okay so there is something what we are going to verify when we start getting into the command line more in detail so right now uh, we just go with the theory anyway okay so the different status message uh, port states now by default if any port is in the blocking state due to redundant links and that port will be in the blocking state Uh, maybe 20 seconds or there's no limits as long as your main link is working this port will be in the blocking state and if if something goes wrong here let's say if this link goes down then the blocking port will be transitions into forwarding and it's going to take somewhere around 50 seconds default for alternate port now we call this as alternate port transitions into forwarding because it has to wait for 20 seconds of 20 seconds of maximum time and then if there is no bpd messages coming from this way because of the link is down in that case it says that it has reached the maximum time and after that it goes through listening state where it is going to uh, go with the same calculation process again and the learning stage find the root bridge and before it puts the ports into forwarding state so the entire timer it's going to take 50 seconds if any of the link fails the default convergence time in case of spanning tree will be around 50 seconds in case of uh, indirect this link in case of the uh, local link fails if there if this link fails it will take a default convergence time of 30 seconds uh, because this link is uh, on the local switch so it's not going to take that 20 seconds time so the default convergence time in case of spanning tree if your main link fails either it will be 30 seconds or 50 seconds depending upon the kind of the link if the link on the same switch goes down as the blocking port it will take around 30 seconds if any link fails which is not on the same switch we call it as indirect link it's going to take somewhere around 50 seconds default convergence time now this is something we'll be verifying more in detail in our next section where we'll practically verify the behavior okay